Top 10 shocking moments. Um, there are some things that you expect to see on the football pitch, some things you don't expect to see, and some things that absolutely blow your mind. Well, that's what I've got coming up in the next few minutes with some great games, some ridiculous transfers, and an on-the-pitch scuffle that won't be forgotten in 10 shocking moments in football. Now, just a quick reminder, these aren't the top 10 most shocking, they're just 10 shocking moments. I'm sure there's many more out there, of which you guys can let me know in the comment section down below. But without any further ado, let's get into the first one. Up first is Zinedine Zidane leaving Real Madrid at the end of last season. Now, there were murmurs that he wasn't particularly happy with the way that some things are run within the club. However, after winning the third Champions League in a row and only two and a half years into his first ever senior managerial job at one of the biggest clubs in the world, I did definitely did not see him leaving. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that Cristiano Ronaldo was going to leave afterwards. But despite this, as we all know, Zidane is back in the hot seat once again. This time he's allowed to do things his way, but I wouldn't rule out such a ridiculous exit yet again should Florentino Perez go back on his word. Next up, and it is a particularly mad moment, a six-minute moment that was in the semi-final of the World Cup back in 2014. Between the 23rd and the 29th minute, Germany managed to take their advantage over Brazil from 2-0 to 5-0. After Miroslav Klose managed to double the lead for the Germans, Antonio Kroos bagged the two goals, Sami Khedira put in the fifth, which basically left the Brazilian team crying at half time. Definitely one of the most shocking moments in World Cup football and in football altogether. It'll probably go down as the best semi final in history depending on who you support, of course. At the time of watching it, I literally couldn't believe it. I'm going to be honest, it's like when you play your younger sibling at FIFA and they're not very good and they can't really hold the controller and every single attack just ends up in a goal. Purely ridiculous football and something that Germany were hoping for a repeat of, but obviously didn't really come true in 2018. Third up on the list and something that really hurts for Spurs fans all over the world. Back in 2001, they had a star centre-back in Sol Campbell who said that he was going to be leaving at the end of the season under the Bosman ruling, meaning he leaving on a free without signing a new contract. Now, first off in the few months beforehand, he said he'd be staying and then reversed his decision. He then said that he'd be moving to Barcelona or Real Madrid and he'd definitely be moving abroad because he couldn't face moving to another English team and playing against Spurs. So, can you imagine the surprise when Arsene Wenger calls a press conference at Highbury, walks out with his brand new summer signing, Sol Campbell. It literally shook the whole of the footballing world and 18 years later there is not a single Spurs fan who has forgiven him or probably have one nice thing to say about him. Whatever you do, do not leave your team for your biggest arch rivals regardless of the success that he went on to have. Number four and back to some on the pitch madness and it was Manchester City's first ever title win. You guys know what happened. They were 2-1 down to QPR heading into injury time and after Edin Dzeko drew them level, Sergio Aguero managed to steal the title for Manchester City and leave all those at the stadium of like completely dumbfounded with what they've seen. Over in the northeast of England, Manchester United had beaten Sunderland by a goal to nil, with all the fans celebrating and Fergie and the players on the pitch just waiting to hear the news from Manchester City. In the end, it wasn't very good news, and so started one of the biggest English rivalries, certainly at the top of the Premier League, that we've seen in the last few decades. Number five, and we're heading back to some Champions League action. And if you think Ronaldo's overhead kick last season against Juventus was ridiculous, what about Gareth Bale? was in the final. This is probably one of the only times that a goal has left me completely and utterly lost for words. I know, right? Me not being able to speak, but it was just ridiculous. It was the fact that this is Gareth Bale who's always injured. Bale who can't get a good run of games on the team and is always said to be leaving Real Madrid. And Gareth Bale who didn't even start the game. He literally came on a few minutes earlier for Isco and somehow pulled that out of the bag. A ridiculous overhead kick to give Real Madrid the lead against Liverpool. He then went on to smash in a third, but Loris Karius really should have done better. However, you can't blame him for not stopping the second. What a ridiculous overhead kick. It's probably the most ridiculous moment in Champions League final history. Even more ridiculous than Zidane's volley against Leverkusen, undone by one of his own players. And talking of Zinedine Zidane, he's next up on this list for what he did back in 2006 in his last ever game. Now, before the tournament in the World Cup, it was said that it was Zidane's last ever appearance on a football pitch and he wanted to bow out on a high. The tournament didn't start too well as Zidane wasn't on the greatest of form of France, just managed to get out of their group. In the quarterfinals though against Brazil, he really turned it on. A phenomenal performance in midfield left many begging Zidane not to leave the game after the tournament, but he was destined to go out on a huge high. He did go out on a moment to remember, just not necessarily a high. It was during the final against Italy that Marco Materazzi said something to Zidane, prompting him to turn around in front of the whole stadium and the whole world watching the World Cup final 
and headbutt his opponent in the chest. There was nothing he could do, he accepted the red card, and that image of him walking off past the World Cup final, knowing that no one would ever see him in a competitive game on a pitch again, well, it's a pretty sad one. Next up, and it's something that you probably wouldn't expect from one of football's most notorious bad boys, it's Paolo Di Canio. The same guy who pushed a referee whilst playing for Sheffield Wednesday and got a huge ban for it. Now, when he was playing for West Ham away at Everton, Goodison Park Faithful was shocked by the fact that he caught the ball mid-game. Now, let me give you some context here. Basically, West Ham were attacking down the right-hand side. The goalkeeper, Paul Gerrard, came out and got knocked out. Basically, as the ball was then put in from Trevor Sinclair, Paolo Di Canio could have just knocked it into an empty net. But instead, he decided to stop, catch the ball, and instead call on fair assistance for the injured goalkeeper. This actually won him the FIFA Fair Play Award for 2001 for a special act of sportsmanship, something that you definitely, definitely wouldn't associate with Di Canio. However, that was a pretty shocking moment in the history of football. Maybe not shocking as I can't believe it happened, but certainly from the fact that you definitely, as I said, wouldn't expect it from such a player. Next up now, and it's an on the pitch scuffle that will definitely go down in history, but will be something that Newcastle fans won't look too lightly upon. It is the fight between Kieran Dyer and Lee Bowyer. So just to set the scene, Newcastle were at home to Aston Villa. They were 3-0 down and playing pretty poorly when Bowyer asked Dyer why he wasn't giving him the ball. Dyer's response of basically your shit obviously didn't go down too well and the two were involved in an on the pitch scuffle. After already having Steven Taylor sent off for handballing, both Newcastle players were sent off, meaning that Alan Shearer, the captain of Newcastle, had to help his team see out the game with eight men. They went on to, of course, lose 3-0. But the most ridiculous thing is, after the match, both players were sat either side of Newcastle manager Graham Sooners to apologise in a press conference. And what did Graham Sooners say? He offered both of them out just to see how hard they were in a fight after the press conference. Just when you think the manager's going to cool things down, he then goes and offers both players out. Of course, they apologise and things went back to normal, sort of. They both stayed at Newcastle for one more year before actually following each other to West Ham. So our penultimate shocking moment on this list was one in the European Championships where somehow Greece, playing the most ugliest of defensive football, managed to win the Euros in 2004. Now, they started and finished the campaign with a victory over Portugal. And throughout the tournament, they never went to a penalty shootout and only one knockout game went to extra time. They somehow managed to beat Portugal in the final 1-0. This is a Portugal that contained the likes of Figo, Deco, Costinha and even a 19-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo who was in tears after the game that he couldn't bring the championship home to his home crowd. Of course, he did go on to win it in 2016, but that's irrelevant. For 2004, it was Greece's tournament, and despite playing ugly football, they have probably won the most historic Euros in the history of the competition. And lastly but not least, we come to one of the most shocking moments in the transfer market, the most shocking moment, and it's Neymar's transfer to PSG a couple of years ago. Now, if it wasn't for the fact that he was moving in his prime to a team in a far less competitive league, it was the fact that PSG went and absolutely smashed the world transfer record. At the time, Paul Pogba was the most expensive transfer in world football for around £89 million from Juventus to Manchester United. So PSG could have said, you know what, we'll give you 100. We'll beat the record with 100. That's only 11 million more. 120, 130, 150. No, they went and spent almost 200 million on the Brazilian. And now it's looking like a bit of a waste of money because he's not even there to help them go further in the Champions League than the quarter final stage. Also, what this did was set a precedent that now every player is worth at least 50 million. You've got some clubs charging 50, 60, 70 million for bang average players. And I can't help but think it's the fault of Neymar. Of course, he didn't actually want this to happen. Well, he didn't actually want the specific transfer fee to happen, but it did. And he's got to carry that on his back. If someone Someone's going to go and break the record now for 250 million probably it's going to have to be one hell of an exceptional player and it's not going to be Lionel Messi because he's not going to move to PSG so no one's going to be worth it I honestly think that this transfer record will probably stand for the next 10 20 30 years so there you have it 10 of my most shocking moments in football as I mentioned before it's not the most shocking you guys can let me know yours in the comment section below whilst you're down there you can also smash the like button and click here or here to check out all of the other videos that I've got going on on OneFootball but until next time I will see you guys later.